Welcome to this Adult Education Senior University session, Healthy Living for Your Brain and Body. The presenter for the session is Henry Hank Mosley. My name is uh, Henry Mosley, Hank Mosley. I'm a pastor uh, at Heartland Church here in Fishers, Indiana, but I'm also a community educator uh, for the Alzheimer's Association. And I'm so glad you're here uh, with us this afternoon. Uh, one of the things that I, I really appreciate about uh, the opportunity to share some information with you is the fact that, you know, part of this whole journey uh, with the brain and body begins with healthy living. And so we're going to go through some of these slides. Um, like as was mentioned, if you have a comment or something, put it in chat. We'll try to get that answered. Uh, this presentation will be about 50 minutes in its entirety, uh, but we'll get through it uh, in a way that I think it will be informational. If you want to take notes, please do so. But again, this record it is recorded, so uh, this information will be available to you at, a, at another date if needed, okay? Uh, so let's get going, and I appreciate your time and your patience with us. Some learning objectives. Uh, uh, we're going to identify the reasons for uh, this whole element of dealing with healthy brain, healthy living uh, at, at any age, really, but Mainly as we age, period, there's some strategies to age well. Aging well is so important. Aging is something that's going to happen regardless, but aging well is a whole nother journey. Uh, and it will talk about physical health and exercise, certainly diet and nutrition, cognitive activity, and of course, social engagement, which some people go through life in isolation. We don't want you to do that. We want you to socially engage. And we want to make it make your own plan for healthy aging using the healthy living for your brain and body. These are some tips uh, from a research that's been done. And I think it's very helpful. Wish this would have been around years ago uh, to help a lot of people that just didn't know how to cope with this uh, this this situation that they went through with cognitive impairment. So healthy aging and health, how does it work? Aging well depends on your genes, your genes, right? And so we all have a gene pool, uh, and oftentimes you see generations of individuals go through aging poorly based on genes. Obviously, there's environment. Sometimes your environment that you come up with is not so healthy. There's a lot of things that are going on that don't measure out to good health. Uh, the other is lifestyle, how we lead life. And there are sometimes things that we do to ourselves, and then sometimes there's things that people do to us. And then, of course, just just the things that we just don't get right. Lifestyle choices may help keep your body and brain healthy. So the brain, the brain, the brain, it's a control center of the body, the control center of the entire body. And whether you realize it or not, there are 100 billion nerve cells or neurons creating this branching network that sends signals to every area of our body. These signals traveling through the brain form memories, thoughts, and certainly feelings. Alzheimer's disease destroy, destroys brain cells. That's why the effect is how it is, because it actually doesn't minimize them. It destroys them. And that's something that we need to take note of, okay? So the heart and brain connection. So there's a brain, okay, which is the hub. And then we have the heart. The heart and the brain are interrelated. What you do to protect your heart can also help your brain continue to operate at its best. So they're in coordination at all times, even as we're on this call right now, the heart and brain are interrelating to one another. The brain needs blood flow. The brain depends on oxygen and adequate blood flow to work well. And 25% of blood from every heartbeat goes to the brain. So we need both of those organs working functioning right so that we make sure that we're going through our day correctly. Now, Alzheimer's and dementia. Well, let's talk a little bit about that. Well, dementia is caused by many different diseases and conditions. It is not part of normal aging. Alzheimer's disease is the most common cause of dementia. Now, a lot of people say, well, this person or that person, they have Alzheimer's. Well, Actually, Alzheimer's disease is the most common cause of dementia. So it's dementia, and then there's Alzheimer's. The risks for Alzheimer's and dementia include age, genetics, head injury, 
cardiovascular factors, and fewer years of formal education. And that was an interesting one when I came aboard, formal education. Well, you know, some people go through school and don't learn much. Other people go through school and they learn a lot. But however it relates to this, it's a fact that how we are exercising the brain, how we are receiving information, formulating it, and using it to help us in, in walking through life. Therapies for Alzheimer's can treat symptoms for a time. Therapy. We all need therapy from time to time. Most people don't go to therapy for anything. Well, we need brain therapy from time to time, things that stimulate our brain to make us think better. Uh, but in this case, therapies for Alzheimer's can treat symptoms for a time, but they cannot cure, prevent, or even slow disease progression. Now, that's kind of not so great news, but there are some things we can do to kind of minimize the, the, the progress of it, okay? And that's why we're having this discussion today. So taking care of yourself uh, is important. And, and more importantly, as you age. And we're gonna look at four little quads about how that looks, cognitive activity, physical health and exercise, diet and nutrition, and of course, social engagement. And so let's take a look at that first, physical health and exercise. Hopefully you're exercising at least a little bit. You know, I mean, walking, swimming, uh, aerobics, something to help you kind of get through. Well, one of the things that I would like to point out here is this. Uh, what we do know that cardiovascular activity may reduce your risk of cognitive decline. Regular and vigorous exercise leads to increased blood flow and other physical activities may also yield benefits. There is no single recipe for brain health, but you need to do something to help get that cardiovascular uh, activity moving in your body that blood flow moving in your body. Even if you're walking around your home, back and forth, uh, that does something to help regulate uh, what I call healthy exercise. It's surprising Here's a video how you can that. easily build up habits up. of just taking 15 to 20 minutes out of your day to go down, hit the treadmill, and just do it. Just do it. Just get on it, put my headphones on, and just walk at a nice brisk pace for myself, build up a quick heartbeat, quick sweat. And it's amazing how quickly I can go from 15 minutes to 20 minutes, and then over time, 30 minutes, and over time, 40 minutes, before you need five minutes of walking. And even at a higher incline and also at a higher pace. And again, it's all about incorporating habits and the choices that we make. So doing something is really important. So what can we do? Uh, we can do something you like, right? I mean, you may not like, you know, walking a trail, uh, but walk in your neighborhood. Uh, you may not like walking on a treadmill. It's kind of boring. Uh, but go to a park and walk through the park and just see nature. Do something. Uh, start out small so you don't have to go and do a 10-mile <clears throat> marathon. 10-mile marathon. Uh, but you can certainly start out with a half a mile or working your way up to a mile and just go that route. And you find yourself, before you know it, you've walked a couple of miles. A lot of people I know, uh, they go to the mall and just walk around the mall. One, uh, you get the people watch a little bit, which helps with, you know, uh, your brain activity, but it also helps you get those steps in. Move safely, of course. You know, don't do something that, you know, is not safe. Uh, get your heart rate up uh, just enough where... You can understand that you're not overworking, but you're not underworking, but you're working at a pace where you, you feel uh, your body get into a rhythm. Ask friends to join you. It's always nice uh, to have someone with you to encourage you to keep going. And of course, most importantly, check with your doctor before you start. Just make sure you're healthy enough to do the basics because that's so important to get going and you don't wanna injure yourself or cause even greater problems because you didn't check in with your doc, especially if you're taking meds. The other thing is stop smoking. If you're smoking, stop, okay? Now don't do it. Uh, the other big thing is avoid access alcohol. One person's body weight may be a little different from another. So you say, oh, I only you know, drink a, you know, two 
glasses of wine at night. Well, that may be too much for what your body uh, mechanics are. So just be certain not to, to do too much of that alcohol. I'm not saying don't drink if that's what you want to do, but please don't do it in excess. Get adequate sleep. You know, the big thing, a big two words going on right now, sleep apnea. Well, you know, it seems like if you go to the doctor and talk about ad inadequate sleep, they're going to suggest, you know, one of those sleep apnea machines, right? And so just know that good sleep, seven to eight hours is great. Six at a minimum, but seven to eight, a lot better. Avoid any type of head injuries, falls, things like that. Uh, be careful walking, any of those things that may call trip and fall in your home. You know, remove those rugs, uh, you know, calling organizations uh, like a Zocoa. I know that's a, another name that deals with this a little bit, but they're very good about sending someone out uh, to kind of make sure that you're not dealing with things that could cause a fall. Manage stress, build really big, you know, manage your stress level. Uh, make sure you don't try to take on more uh, than is needed and necessary. Treat depression. It's nothing wrong with therapy. Uh, it's important. Most people think, oh, I don't need this or I don't need that regarding therapy. It is nothing wrong with going to a therapist and just getting an idea of how you're managing things that may be causing you some stress. Visit your doctor regularly, at least one time a year. Myself, I go a couple of times a year just to make sure that things are, are, are in check. Uh, I also I see a neurologist uh, once a year just to make sure my brain's, you know, perking adequately as well. So physical health, health and exercise is really important. Uh, most of this you probably already know, but just modeling it, doing it is really important. Uh, what else can we do? We can monitor our numbers and take action. If you don't have a, a blood pressure, you know, unit in your home, they're pretty inexpensive. I would ask you to maybe get one of those and take your blood pressure before you walk. After you walk, that's a good idea. Uh, watch your blood sugar. Uh, hopefully you're not diabetic, but if you are, uh, you know, modify your eating. Uh, portion control is really important for that. Certainly watching your weight. Uh, you know, these days, you know, you don't have to be a skinny mini not to be healthy, uh, but you can be overweight at times and that can be a problem. Uh, cholesterol issues become a part of the, this equation of health as well. Uh, if you are on some type of uh, one of those statins, uh, if you are prescribed, and you can take it, please take it because that will help as well, as well as healthy eating. Uh, so let's take a look at diet and nutrition because that is really important. Uh, and, you know, everybody likes a good meal. <laughs> I know I do. Uh, but, you know, we have to be careful how we measure uh, portions. Portion control is so needed today. You can overeat. There's a such thing as called as it's like head hunger and stomach hunger. Our stomach is not that big. But when you see people with a big old plate of food, yeah, that stomach will stretch out, but it's not the best nutritional value, how it digests in your system. And it can cause you to be sluggish at times. And it can also affect your mental health, believe it or not. Nutritious food is fuel for the brain. Nutritious food is fuel for the brain. Not just any kind of food, but nutritious food. Okay, so watch what you shop for when you go to the store. Try to find those things that have good nutritional value. And uh, sometimes that's a little tricky these days, uh, but do your best to, to make that happen. Uh, follow some dietary guidelines that can reduce your risk of heart disease, cancer, Parkinson's disease, certainly Alzheimer's disease, stroke, and diabetes. Uh, I know plenty of folks in my family uh, didn't practice this very well. And guess what? They ended up with heart disease. Some of them ended up with strokes, and some of them certainly had diabetes, which is something that can really cause harm uh, to your body and to your system. So Foods that video. have been shown to um, lead to healthy aging would be um, fruits and vegetables, and in particular, green leafy vegetables and berries, as well as limited intake of high-fat food items that you get through high-fat dairy and cheese and red meats, and also um, healthy vegetable oils. So this would be, olive oil would be a good example, have been shown to reduce your risk of heart disease as well as dementia. So there are some, some tips uh, from someone uh, that is a nutrition per professional that can 
can guide you in that. But I would talk to your doctor about what you eat and what you avoid. Uh, so what you can eat, I like vegetables. Hopefully you do too. You know, certain fruits, uh, nuts, beans, and whole grains are good options. Uh, certainly lean meats, fish, and poultry. And of course, using those vegetable oils versus uh, those fatty oils that are out there as well. It may taste a little better sometimes, but, you know, be careful of that. Avoid saturated trans fats, processed foods, things that are in a box, uh, you know, solid fat, sugar, and salt. I like a little salt, but too much is not good for us. Uh, deep fried foods, you know, on a, uh, often are not great. And, of course, unhealthy fast foods. Be careful to, to monitor this because it's really important because all those things affect uh, your how you think. And if you're tired, you're, you're cognitive, it's not going to be a short. If you are overweight, you're not going to be able to do the things that you normally would do. So just make sure diet and nutrition is at the top of your list uh, for a healthy brain, healthy living. Uh, diet and nutrition, a little bit more on that. Uh, what else can we do is we can look at reputable sources about dietary supplements. Hopefully you take vitamins because, you know, a general just multivitamin is oftentimes not enough, depending on your body, uh, you know, your BMI, all that good stuff. It's not, not necessarily enough B12 or it may not be enough C. So, you know, talk to your doctors about uh, maybe some additional supplement vitamins that can help uh, when you don't always eat the best things of that nature. Uh, really be a big organization, the World Health Organization uh, concluded that vitamins and supplements should not be recommended to reduce the risk of cognitive de decline and dementia, but, uh, but it's worthwhile to talk with your doctor to just, you know, make sure there's a healthy balance. I know myself, I have, you know, uh, a, a doc who really uh, talks to me before he touches me. And we talk about what I'm uh, ingesting, what what's going on with my diet, what's what kind of vitamins and supplements am I taking? Because he wants to make sure that they're working. I happen to go to an internal medicine doctor rather than just a, a general family physician. Either one, can help, but make sure you ask questions. Take a list of questions with you when you go to the doctor. That's my tip for you uh, when you're taking things other than prescribed medication, if you're on prescribed medication. Well, cognitive activity, cognitive activity. How do we keep activity happening with our brain? Keeping your mind active forms new connections among brain cells. And then of course, cognitive activity encourages blood flow to the brain. So the more stimuli that's happening, it helps with connecting. Uh, mentally stimulating activities may possibly maintain or even improve cognition. So what, what does that mean? Well, here's the thing. If we're, if we're doing something that challenges our thinking, it's probably going to help us improve cognition. In other words, some people uh, I know do crossword puzzles, or they do these word uh, teaser games, or or they may watch something like Jeopardy <laughs> and try to guess what the next question is, answer to the next question. Do something to stimulate uh, your mind and your thinking, uh, rather than just being so sedentary all the time. And if you can, avoid the news, because that's not very stimulating at all, at least not in a healthy way. Engaging in formal education will keep your brain healthy and can provide protection against developing dementia. Formal education, even in our later ages, go to a workshop every now and then, you know, attend a, a, a library function that they're talking about something that may be important to you uh, for living life well, or something that may inspire you. If, you. if you have a religious, you know, background, you know, make sure you, you know, go to a Bible study or get involved in, in one of those uh, organ, uh, activities that cause you to maybe read and discuss, read and discuss, because that's very healthy for, for maintaining uh, cognition as well. One of the most interesting factors is cognitive stimulating activities, which basically for us just means uh, mental processing of information. Um, it can be from a book, it can be from the radio, it can be a magazine, it can be from a lecture, it can actually be from watching TV. All of these things require processing information. 
And the old adage of, you know, use it or lose it is actually something that turns out, at least from the observational data, to look like it's true. So numerous studies now have shown that being more engaged um, in cognitively stimulating activities is actually good for maintaining cognition. And it's true in late life, and it's true in early life. And so what we recommend is that you start early, and if you're already late, start now. Big takeaway I got from that video, uh, if, you, if you haven't done anything, start now, okay? Uh, just start. Just get it going. Just, just begin uh, because you're going to find that uh, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, if you give it a year, you're going to be your best self. I promise you it's something about getting started, maybe a little difficulty because it's kind of changing your routine, changing your habits. Uh, but if you get that thing going uh, in a year, if you're all in for a year, you're going to find yourself being the, a better self. I promise you. So what can you do? Read some books uh, and articles that challenge and inspire you. There's plenty of information out there now. Uh, if some of you uh, are comfortable uh, going online, uh, you know, Kindle books are really good. Uh, you can sit there in, the, in a good, quiet space at home uh, and just spend a little time, 30 minutes a day. Uh, just reading a couple of chapters or something that that challenges or inspires you, uh, that's a good way to get that cognitive activity working. Complete puzzles, play games um, uh, that are challenging for you. Anything that causes you uh, to think about uh, what uh, something that's more than just thinking about what life is all about. I mean, do something that gives you the ability uh, to get informed or or get to a place where uh, you can't wait uh, to get together uh, with a group of folks who maybe challenge you in thinking. Learn new skills or hobbies. Uh, some people uh, do things like bowling or they do things that, that or they even may, may do things that uh, uh, they may go and paint. Uh, there's the, the wine and canvas stuff that people do now. Uh, it, things that are fun, things that make you laugh. Uh, anything that stimulates the brain is good. Engage in ongoing learning. Don't stop. Don't stop at all because it's really important uh, to keep things uh, going when it comes to cognitive activity. Uh, the last thing we're going to kind of talk about is social engagement. Uh, this is really important. Some people are loners. Uh, they like being by themselves. They don't like hanging out with the crowd, if you if you would say it that way. Uh, they just are okay uh, kind of being kind of by themselves. Uh, but social engagement is really important uh, and it's associated with living longer uh, with fewer disabilities. It's something about being around other people uh, that cause you to stimulate the brain uh, is really uh, essential. And these experts that have come up with this kind of four uh, quad kind of system, cognitive activity, diet and nutrition, physical health and exercise, Social engagement is one of those powerful things. Now, obviously, you want to be around people you like, people that you get along with, things like that. Uh, but just put that on your list if it's not already on your list. Uh, staying engaged in the community. Volunteerism is a powerful social engagement strategy. Find out something that you that you really have a, some passion about or or that's something you feel like you can give back. It's, it's you know, the the uh, there's a saying, it's more blessed to give than receive. Uh, find something that allows you to bless somebody else. Uh, you know, volunteer uh, for a habitat, volunteer at a food pantry, volunteer uh, at a shelter, and, and just uh, uh, be involved in something that you have passion about. It really helps maintain, one, your social skills, but it also gets you enjoyment. Uh, which I think helps as well. Uh, remaining both socially and mentally active may support brain health and possibly delay the onset of dementia. Now, notice it didn't say it's going to stop it from happening, but it will delay it. And and there are individuals that that have had dementia uh, pay a visit early in their fifties, certainly in their sixties, but there are other people that may have not had a onset of dementia until they were well into their 80s, 90s, uh, before it, it kind of showed up. 
Uh, either way, I'm just saying social engagement is a way uh, to kind of slow that down a little bit. And anything that can help with that, uh, boy, I'm interested in. Social engagement. engagement. So what can you do? Uh, well, visit with friends and family. Now, I know this is it's kind of a cliche statement. Uh, a lot of you may not have a lot of friends because maybe you moved away from where a lot of friends were. That's where, you know, having the ability to get involved with some organizations that are doing things, volunteering, things like that, you can probably gain new friends. And regarding family, some people have really large expanded family groups. Others have very few, right? And, and sometimes that engagement, you may not see uh, someone in your family for months, a year or so, depending on where they're located. But try to visit as often as you can. Get to know your neighbors, okay? Uh, there are some people that live in neighborhoods, and if you ask them, hey, do you know who lives across the street or a couple of doors down? They can't tell you. Take time to get to know your neighbors. That's a way to gain some possibly new relationships or friendships. Engage with others wherever you go. Engagement is not that hard. Uh, if you go to the store, Kroger's, Myers, or whatever, see someone coming down the aisle, just say hello. Hey, you know, you're out here shopping too today. You'll be surprised what kind of conversation uh, will happen just by engaging with others. That's social engagement. That's really easy. Stay involved in the community. Uh, there's always uh, a lot of uh, homes have... Uh, homeowners associating meetings and, you know, try to attend those. Sometimes they can get a little little uh, frisky, but, you know, but that's a way to, to stay involved. Uh, volunteer outside the home. I mentioned that before. Uh, join a group or club if you're not already a part of that. Uh, you know, sometimes, uh, uh, you know, every club, every group is not the best fit for everybody. But if there's something out there that involves people that is helping, I believe that things that help others is a good way uh, to get a social engagement started. So putting all four pieces together is really important. In other words, not just one of these will, will prevent, but all of these together can help prevent uh, what I call that, that aging process uh, that affects dementia, uh, that mild cognitive impairment, uh, taking care of your health, get moving, eating right, keeping your mind active, stay connecting with others, connected with others. Combine all four to achieve the maximum benefits. I know I want to have maximum benefits. Hopefully, everybody this afternoon wants to have max, maximum benefits. Uh, and so we have to do this to make sure uh, that we are getting the most advantage uh, for uh, living uh, life better. Uh, as it relates to the onset of dementia. Here's another video. Recently at the Alzheimer's Association International Conference, there was a study reported of the results of a large clinical trial that was done in the Scandinavian countries. And in this trial, they took half the people in the trial and they adjusted their exercise level, their diet, uh, their social engagement, uh, and their mental stimulation. They, they developed programs for each one of those variables, uh, changed all of those for the people that were in the test group, and the control group just lived as they had been. And what they found was that the test group had less conversion to mild cognitive impairment, which, was, uh, uh, which is a, a uh, preliminary stage of Alzheimer's disease. To my mind, one of the things that this has done is it, it's changed the, the force of uh, recommendation that we might make around uh, the benefit of these interventions for prevention of Alzheimer's disease or for brain health. And the fact is that I think it's moved it from possibly exercise, diet adjustments, social engagement, mental stimulation are useful to probably, and that's a big change and makes it easier for people to make those kinds of adjustments um, for the benefit of their future health. Well, Dr. Bill, uh, he said it really well uh, on some things that we can do. And, um, you know, those studies, there's so many studies now. Uh, these studies were not available, you know, 30, 40, 50 years ago, at least not to the general public. 
Uh, but we've got a lot more information now uh, that helps us uh, along this path. Uh, so here's kind of how this kind of summarizes, so to speak. What do now? Well, as we mentioned, begin today. You know, it's never too late or too early uh, to start living in a more healthy way. It's not. Okay, so there's no excuse. Uh, start small and build. Uh, just pick one area to start with, right? Uh, and uh, take your chance changes step by step. Uh, you know, you don't eat the whole uh, loaf of bread <laughs> in one day. Uh, one slice at a time will do. Uh, and do what you enjoy and stick with it for a while, right? So everybody may not have the same passions for what they do, uh, but if you enjoy it, stick with it. I know of a, of a, a husband and wife, uh, they decided to do something different that they never done before. They joined the Y and, you know, they started swimming uh, and exercising, you know, in the pool. They love that. And they go religiously. Matter of fact, I think they're up to about two or three times a week now, just, you know, going to the Y and, and they're part of this group, other people. And guess what? They built some friendships. They got another social group and they look forward to, to seeing one another. And to my understanding, every now and then they'll go out and grab a little lunch or, you know, breakfast, whatever time the swimming uh, uh, session is over. So do things that you enjoy and stick with it. And of course, make healthy choices, uh, exercise, eat a nutritious diet, uh, do the things that, I mean, you know, most of us know what health, what is healthy and what's not, right? But the thing about those unhealthy things, they're pretty tempting, right? Especially as we kind of come across, you know, Thanksgiving, uh, you know, we love the healthy stuff, but how many times have you gone past the dessert table and see all those things that may not be the best for you. Uh, well, here's the way I look at it. Instead of getting a big old slice of that favorite pie, just get a little sliver, okay? I'm not saying don't eat it, just don't eat half of it, okay? Just do something that's healthy. Make a plan, uh, that's key. Uh, use a workbook, you know, document it. Uh, just, just like you're planning a trip, plan your, Plan your uh, new uh, development on how you're going to do the right things to be more cognitively uh, purposeful, okay? And uh, you do that for a while, and next thing you know, it becomes a good old habit. And, you know, good habits are, are, are hard to break, like bad habits are hard to break. So if you've been in this bad habit mode, get in a good habit mode. Uh, but making a plan is part of that. Get support from others uh, and others like the Alzheimer's Association, IU, uh, the Neurology Center, you know, Goodman Hall. They do a lot of things. Get involved. Uh, there's all this good information available as well. Uh, so there's a lot of ways you can do it. But whatever you do, do it and have fun. Uh, don't do anything that's a, a chore. Uh, don't make this a, a, a dirge. Uh, don't look at, oh, I got to exercise today. Or I got to eat healthy today. No, uh, make it so that you're doing it for a, a, a purpose. And that's to keep yourself healthy. I mean, it's a good reason for, for some of the stuff that we're talking about. And kind of continue to engage in activities that can make that happen, okay? Uh, be a savvy consumer. Uh, right now, food prices are high. Uh, you know, you can't go to the store anymore without spending more money than you want to spend. Uh, so if it's too good to be true, it's probably not true. So just don't go for a relying. Uh, check check your your when you go to the the the, the fruits and vegetable aisle. Uh, there's a lot of things that you may want to buy. Uh, you know, make sure that organic is organic, right? Uh, talk to the guy that you see there putting up the the product. Uh, they'll be honest with you. I've asked them. I say, hey, you know, all these say organic. So how do I decide? And they'll tell you what the good stuff is and what is just, you know, not so good. They'll tell you, even though probably they're not inclined to do so, because, you know, not too many people ask. But ask, you'll get an answer, I promise you. Be cautious when you hear huge promises or reports of miracle cures. Uh, there's a lot of stuff on the shelf today that talk about what they'll help with, you know, cognitive impairment. There are neurologists I go to, I ask them about those things. 
One, they're not FDA approved. Uh, these are summaries of some people's thoughts or, you know, they get 100 people to say this is the greatest product, product since the paperclip. And next thing you know, you know, it's selling off the shelves. So be careful of those things. Consult trusted, reputable professionals, your doctor, your local pharmacist, and most importantly, the Alzheimer's Association. A tremendous amount of information that's available through the Alzheimer's Association. So check in. Uh, it's all a lot of free. I mean, all of it's free, really. Uh, and they have a 24-7 helpline. We're going to get into that as we kind of close here. Uh, so that 24-7 helpline, free service, is available around the clock, 365 days a year. Uh, there's helpline specialists, master's level clinicians that offer confidential support and information. There's a bilingual staff and, and translation service in over 200 languages. So that is unique. That's not something that happens everywhere. Uh, there's live chat available as well. So just remember, uh, this is a great resource uh, and it's something that can help you along this path of healthy living, healthy brain, healthy living. Uh, so there's some virtual programs as well. I want to mention that uh, free online e-learning is available at www.alz.org. Uh, uh, take a look at some of those uh, because you're probably uh, coming up on an age group where you need to know some of those things. If not for yourself or somebody you know, maybe an uncle, auntie, maybe a grandparent, uh, or just a good friend that doesn't have someone to come alongside them, let them know about this information, you know, guide them to this site. If they don't have a computer or they're not technology literate, uh, then, you know, help them, okay? And I'm sure uh, that things will, will uh, you'll get a benefit uh, from it, I promise you, okay? Uh, the other thing that I may want to mention is that uh, the community community resource finder that's available, you know, there's things that can help you uh, along this journey uh, and be certain to use it. You know, it's not going to be any good if you don't use it. So if you're looking for some resources, uh, there are organizations, uh, AARP, of course, uh, other community services, housing options, medical services, care at home. All of those are just sources. But go to communityresourcefinder.org. There's a lot of more things on there than what you see here. And you'll find that they'll be helpful. And don't just get the information for yourself. Share it with someone else. That's really important. The power of sharing uh, good information is really, really helpful. Other than that, uh, we're closing in on the end. Um, Again, kind of a free online community is there available for you. Uh, people living with the disease, get information on that, caregivers. Uh, stress on caregivers is really, really uh, tough these days. Um, I'm living that journey now with my mother-in-law and my wife, uh, 96 years old, uh, still at home, uh, but cared for by family uh, and a little home health care, okay? Uh, but it's still difficult. So uh, it's just one of those things that that's that's happened. Uh, praise uh, God for 96 years, but it's been tough for all everybody in the family. Uh, so uh, get connected, uh, view those message boards that are out there to provide you insight if you're dealing with that uh, as a uh, caregiver uh, or you know somebody that's dealing with it. Share the information with them uh, so that they can re uh, respond accordingly. Uh, other than that, uh, there's a little navigator out there, free online tool uh, that helps guide caregivers to answer uh, to answer questions and create a personalized action plan linking you to information, support, and local resources. So I think Alzheimer's has done a great job of informing people on how to deal with uh, very, very uh, important uh, but um, kind of tragic uh, disease that's out there. Uh, and it's been out there a long time. I know my parents uh, dealt with it. They didn't call it Alzheimer's or dementia. It was called, you know, being senile or um, uh, one of the favorites uh, uh, that was out there, old timers disease. I don't think that's a medical word for it, but that's what they call it, old timers disease. So just know that uh, this navigator is here as a guide. Uh, and it can be very helpful as well. 